Welcome to another episode of Fougere Family Adventures. Today, I'm extremely excited to share with you a new lake to me. I'm fishing Stump Lake today here in British Columbia. It is about a half an hour south of Kamloops in between Kamloops and Merritt. I've explored this lake a little bit and I found a couple of boat launches. There is a forest wreck site, but it is closed at this time for renovations. And we are fishing on the south end of the lake at this time. I'm anticipating some wind coming in our direction. So when I fish a new lake, I always wanna be upwind in case I run into troubles. Now, if it was windy out, I would actually want to be fishing the other end of the lake because that's where a lot of the plankton is gonna get pushed to. And I wanna fish in those shallow zones. But for today, I'm gonna to target the shallow end, get that plankton up off the shallow end, and I'm gonna fish the south end where I'm thinking there might be some kokanee hanging out. So if you've never been to Stump Lake before, the drive from Kamloops to Stump Lake was absolutely stunning. I'm fishing earlier in the year, so the grass is greener. You got a nice gentle highway all the way down to the lake. My only concern with this lake is the parking. The boat launch is extremely busy, and the highway is right beside the boat launch. So be very careful if you come here, be mindful of the highway traffic and try not to get to an accident on the highway. Now Stump Lake is also known for its rainbows. At this time of the year, I've noticed multiple anglers on the shoreline and I believe they're crawling and fishing for rainbows. But for me, I came here specifically for kokanee. Today I'm going to use frozen corn. I've never used frozen corn before. I'm trying a new lake, so I'm trying a lot of new things here today. I do not have a trolling motor to slow myself down. So I am kind of wishing for a little bit of wind here on Stump Lake, and that should help slow my boat down. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to our channel. Now I haven't marked any fish on my fish finder yet. So I really need to troll around and find out where these fish are. Thankfully, I'm here for a couple days. The lake is fairly large and I'm able to explore. And I'm gonna mark those fish. When I find one, I'll mark it on my GPS and I'll be able to figure out exactly where these fish are. Keep in mind, earlier in the year, kokanee tend to be higher in the water column. Now, as the temperature rises, these fish will get pushed down and they'll get pushed down to a thermocline zone where they're easier to mark. So I'd like to talk about safety. We've gotten to the lake safely. We've been careful at the boat launch. We've got in the water. Now you need to be careful on the boat. Now our boat doesn't really have a bimini top or a cover. So we generally have an umbrella with us when we're traveling with the family, fishing with the family. And I just started wearing a long sleeve UV sun shirt. And this is helping out immensely. Underneath my life jacket, I stay nice and cool when I wear this long sleeve sun shirt. Something I'm gonna be playing with this summer and I'm gonna see if it makes a big difference. I've also started wearing sunglasses. I do not like sunglasses, but by wearing sunglasses, it allows me to see into the water and it also allows me to protect my eyes in this sun. So as I explore, I like to tie different lures, different setups. So I'm watching my fish finder. I am on a new lake, so I don't really know the spots that are coming up and down, but I did check out a depth map before I came here and there really isn't a lot of up and down as long as I stay closer to the middle. So I'm just kind of zigzagging around and just exploring and making my way to the south end of the lake. There seems to be a lot more trout anglers at this end of the lake. I don't know if that's normal for Stump Lake, but we will explore a bit before I go to the places that people have said on social media are good. And of course the internet gives all this information to you to go catch some fish but don't forget about exploring. We need to get out there and explore. I love exploring. That is why I fish. I come to new lakes, I fish, I explore, and I learn. I love to learn. So when I'm fishing a new lake, I check the regional regulations and the lake specific regulations. Before I came, I checked the Thompson Nicola, Stump Lake falls within region three, and the daily limit for kokanee is five. Now from there, I check the lake specific regulations and I only see one specific regulation to this lake and that is a boat speed restriction of 70 kilometers per hour. I don't think I can get my boat that fast. I should be okay. So if you're new to our channel, 
you'll see some of our older videos where I'm always adjusting my depths, my speed, my lures, my scents. When you're kokanee fishing, you always want to try something different. You want to entice that bite. Now, today, I only have my main motor. I don't have a kicker motor. I've been holding off on one for a while. And I'm trolling way too fast. It is extremely calm. So I'm up over two miles an hour. I've come down to 1.8. I'm able to slow myself down a bit, but it's gonna make it more difficult for me to get a bite. So when you're kokanee fishing, you want to make sure you're coming down, come down to 1, 1 1.2 to 1.4 is a good range, and do a lot of throttle bumps, speed up and slow down, and stay within that 1.2 to 1.4 range, then bump up to 1.6, come back down. Always change your speed. And that's something that I'm struggling with today, but I'm hoping if I do enough S turns, that I'm going to slow down enough, and I'm going to entice a strike. I'm fishing an average depth of about 35 feet right now, so I'm going to go to a deeper spot in the lake and I'm going to see if I can find them there. And I'm also going to break this lake down like I normally do. I'll break it down into manageable sections and I'll try each section and see if I can find the fish. Now I know from the internet or social media that people have been posting where they're catching their fish. I wanted to go there first thing this morning, but I first wanted to also explore just to see what's going on. Okay, we've been out here a while. I haven't seen many fish caught. I've seen one kokanee and one rainbow get caught. I hooked one on krill scented corn. Well, we haven't got any more bites. We went through a pretty good school. We had no interest. We had fish come up, check it out. They might have just been checking out our downrigger ball. Downrigger balls can attract fish from a distance. So what I've done is I've changed my corn. I'm gonna change my scent before I change my lures again. And if this works, I'm gonna stick with that corn. And if that doesn't work, I'm gonna to continue to change something until I get another bite. Now, after I've put my line back behind my boat, today I was going about 80 feet. I collect my main line and I hold it in my hand. I'm gonna lift up my ball, I'm gonna grab my release clip. I'm gonna clip my main line to the release clip. You can see that my release clip is on the back of my downrigger ball and I'll drop it down while I hold my thumb on the spool. Well, I might as well check this one. Let's close this up. fish on. Sometimes kokanee will swim with the boat. I saw it bounce, I checked it, I didn't think there was one on. Can't be very big. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh. Yeah, well, there you go. That is my first Stomp Lake Kokanee right here. Caught on our Polina Peak Tackle Hoochie, the Brad's Dodger. Okay, I caught my first Kokanee of Stump Lake. It's pretty awesome. He's not big, he's not like big like I thought, but he's pretty thick in the shoulders. These Kokanee, some of them are so strong that they will swim with the boat. So this guy, he hit it, I saw the rod bounce, nothing, I thought he got off, I checked it, nothing, I let it go. I was doing some stuff here, and then I went to reel in and I had the fish on. Like, it's, it's crazy, these guys will just swim with it. There he is. That is my first kokanee out of Stump Lake, I'll take it. He's not an absolute monster, but I love checking out new lakes, so if you love this video, Please subscribe to our channel for more videos like this coming soon. It was forecast, one of the guys I talked to said it was supposed to get windy at two o'clock. It is now 2.18 
and most of the boats have left the lake. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. There's six cars at the boat launch now. When I got here this morning, it was full. I don't think the wind is something you want to mess around with here on Stump Lake, especially if you're in a smaller boat. Everyone has left the lake. Most of the people are off the lake. There's only a couple boats left. And to me, the fishing is picking up. Sometimes it picks up just before a storm. I've got blue skies above me. And sometimes the bite turns on just before that storm. So I like to be out here just as the storm is coming in. Might not be the best case scenario for this lake. We will find out. Stay tuned. There we go. be the third fish hooked. I lost one and landed one. Actually the fourth fish hooked. It's been fairly slow but it took me until maybe 40 minutes ago to find where the fish are and since I found where they are I seem to be consistently getting into them. This guy feels like he could be a little bit bigger. He's swimming, he's swimming with the boat but he's got definitely a lot of pull. Just want to just give him time. If I turn the boat, I can put less pressure on him and I can sometimes reel him in a little quicker, but I don't want to horse him in. I've already lost one fish. You want to make sure you keep this dodger in the water. Keep your rod tip down, keep it to the side and keep tension on that fish. He's not really doing much, so he's not too spooked. If you get excited, he'll get excited, and then that's when it gets crazy. I want to try and net him nice and easily when he gets to the boat. Still haven't seen him. Just another little guy, so that's okay. I'll take it. It's been a, been a long day, so we'll take what we can get. Hey, there he is. That's my second kokanee on Stump Lake. This guy is perfect size for the smoker. He's got some wide shoulders on him, so he's got some nice fillets there on him, so this will be perfect. I like this size of fish. So we found the fish. We've caught two. I've lost one, just for lack of a better term, to a terrible net job. And We've been circling around in this area. Now I've divided the lake into a few manageable sections that I've wanted to fish. The south side I fished this morning and it wasn't great. I didn't really mark any fish. That being said, it's early in the year. So a lot of these fish are up high. I am however, marking fish in this spot. Now in this spot, we're anywhere from 60 to 80 feet deep. And the fish can be anywhere from 15 to 25 feet deep. That being said, I'm still targeting those higher, those fish that are higher in the water column and I'm fishing 12 feet and it seems to be working okay. Now just because you see fish at 15 and 25 feet, those are not necessarily the bigger fish in the lake. So be mindful of that. If you're trying to target those 30, 30 foot depth fish, they can be smaller. You can catch some pretty big fish on the surface especially earlier in the season. So be mindful that you want to search for those fish, find that fish size. You're going to find the age classes generally stick together. And if you like that size, keep fishing those fish, catch them. But if you keep catching a smaller fish and you want to catch something bigger, go find a different school, find a different school of kokanee, and you can hopefully increase your fish size if that's something that you're looking for. So today I have marked all of my fish in the bay closest to the forest wreck site. I was really hoping to launch there this morning, but it's getting an upgrade. It's getting a facelift right now. It looks great. They have a fishing dock going in right now. The boat launch looks great. So I'm looking forward to checking that out next time I'm back here. This bay in here is a little bit sheltered. Now I was of the understanding that the wind is gonna blow this way today, but it's actually going this way today. So I'm changing the whole way I think about breaking this lake down into manageable steps. Now, if it was going this way, I would be fishing 
the brake line. If there's a brake line and the, the water is choppier over here, I'd be fishing just on the inside. Now with the wind pushing this way, I'm debating on going closer to shore and seeking out some fish in there. And if it continues to push this way, I might actually want to fish that far shoreline where all the food might get pushed to. There we go. Got that guy on, he bit on a Gibbs dog tail. Gibbs dog tail and a bling blade. Seems to work. 